While text to columns can be a quick way for separating a single text string into multiple columns, sometimes you may want to use formulas for a more dynamic approach. In this video, we'll discuss how to use the search, left, right, and mid formulas to separate an address into different buckets. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add three columns to make my life a lot easier. This will be first, second, and third. What these will do is they will tell me the relative position of the commas in my character string. So if I use the search formula, this returns the number of the characters at which a specific character text string is first found. So if I want to search for a comma within my address, F4 to lock that in column D, and then my start number for this first one will be zero. What this will do is it will return the instance of the first comma in my string. And you can see in my first address, it's in the 24th section. In these other sections, it's in the 19th. And it varies based on the length of my street address. For my second comma, I simply take this formula and add one to the start number to say start searching after you've found the first comma. Now what I have is the relative position of the second comma in my string. And I can simply drag this formula to right and it's given me the third comma in my string. These will be very, very helpful for easily querying the information we want. And we'll make our derivative formulas for our addresses and our lookups much, much simpler. So if I want my street address, I can now simply write left text number of characters will be my first comma minus one and now what I have is the street address for each of my employees and I've subtracted one to remove the comma from the street address if I want to fill in my city I can use the mid formula this returns the characters from the middle of a text string so if I use mid of full address my start number will be my first comma position plus two to account for the comma and the space. And then my number of characters will be my second comma minus my first comma position minus two to account for the second comma and the space. If I fill that down, now what I have is just the city name within my address. If I want to return my state, I can use a similar formula. I can write mid of my full address. My start number will be my second character string plus two. And then the number of characters, if I want to remove the abbreviation, I can use a search for open parentheses within text full address and then subtract the position of my second column minus two to account for the comma and the space. And if I fill that down, now I have just the state within my full address. If I want the state abbreviation, I can use mid of my full address. My start number will be search for open parentheses within text full address plus one to move us one character to the right of our open parentheses. And then the number of characters will be two as there are always two characters in a state abbreviation. If I fill that down, I have the state abbreviation now for each one of my addresses. If I wanna find my zip code, I can do this one of two ways. I could use a mid formula. So mid on my full address, my start number will be my third comma plus two and the number of characters I'll just put 255 to get me to the end and that works the other way you could do this is if you know zip codes always have five character strings you could simply write right five and that will work for you and give you the same answer two different ways to accomplish the same task so this approach is obviously much more involved and more time consuming to set up than simply using text to columns but what it does grant you is the flexibility to add new rows were needed. Let's say you had two more employees that were hired and you had new addresses for them. Instead of having to go through this process again, you can simply paste their values at the bottom of this file, drag down these formulas, and you have a updated roster that shows you the street name, the city, the state, the state abbreviation, and the zip code, all while being very dynamic and very easy to update. If you noticed an error in one of these, and this should actually be 84605, you could change that. And your derivative formulas would update. Or if someone moved, let's say they wanted to move actually to 1616 Walton Street because they had a slightly better school district. Now what you have is a reflected street address in your files. Formulas will always be more dynamic than utilizing text to columns or flash fill, but will take longer to set up. Understand the situation 
location in which you're working and understand where it's worth spending additional time to build a dynamic model with additional flexibility versus the quick version to accomplish the task.